Alrighty guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Orly Shani and this is The DIY Designer. If you're new, I'm so glad that you found me. I do really fun DIY fashion and home decor and I am all about creating totally custom one-of-a-kind pieces that really speak to your unique style. So most of the time I will take inspiration that's out in the world, really fun pieces that are super on trend right now, and then find a way to make them very me. And so hopefully through those tutorials, I give you the tools to make them very you as well. So today is a really great one. This is actually a super useful DIY. I'm gonna take a pair of ankle boots that I've had forever, these burgundy ankle boots. Great quality, great fit, super comfortable. I never wear them because of this color. I don't know why, but every time I put them on with an outfit, I'm just like, eh. And so they've just been sitting in my closet. Today is the day I am finally giving them a makeover. And I'm gonna teach you guys how you can change the color, like perfectly change the color of any leather item that you own. You can do it to a leather jacket, chair, skirt, belt, boots, heels, anything. So I turned these burgundy heels into these nude ones. I'm gonna wear them so much now. They just blend in with my legs perfectly. So with skirts, they just give me a little bit of height, a little bit of polish, but they just blend in. But the reason it's sort of a twofer and actually kind of a threefer is that we're gonna be making shoelery. It's a word. It's a word. It's basically a necklace for your shoes. You're gonna be able to create a custom piece of jewelry that you can then attach. It's a really, really fun way to add a little sparkle to like a big chunky pair of boots. You can do them to sneakers too, but you'll need to make them a little bit longer and we'll talk about that in the video. And the reason it's a three fur is that depending on the length, you can actually wear them as necklaces, which is really, really fun. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm so glad that you're here. If you find yourself enjoying this video, I hope you will hit the like button and the subscribe button. That would be so exciting to have you here and uh, let's get right into it. All right, so here are those little leather booties. Now you can see I did a couple of test patches on the boots before I actually decided to do the DIY. There's some metallic paints there and the beige by Angelus. Now Angelus is hands down the kind of leather paint that I recommend. This is really what's gonna last. It's gonna make it feel super soft. It's gonna feel like real leather. I bought beige and it was a little bit too light for my skin tone. So I tried to create a custom color by adding in a little bit of brown and a little bit of pink. I didn't happen to have any brown Angelus, so I mixed together green and red to create brown. You can also mix together orange and blue. I added in a little bit, did a little test patch, felt like I needed a little bit of pink added in, and I definitely needed more of the brown. So I grabbed a little separate cup where I started doing my mixing. So there is my beige with pink, then I added in a lot more of my brown, and basically it's just like you would normally mix paint colors. You're just gonna go until you get an even color. Make sure that you test it, let it dry, and go based off the dry color. Now it's time to just paint. You're just gonna get a nice flat brush, something that you're very comfortable using. I didn't tape anything off, there was really no need. If you happen to get like a tiny bit where you don't want it, just keep a paper towel or a towel handy. Use your fingernail and kind of glide right against the edge and it will clean it right off. You've got plenty of time, it's not gonna dry super fast. Now, thin coats are the way to go. I would say when all is said and done, you're probably gonna need three or four coats to cover it. You'll cover it in two, but the three or four is just gonna keep it from scuffing. And there's one other step to that that you will see. So here's what one coat looks like. I went in and did a second coat of this new color. And once I had done the second coat, that's when I realized it was still a little light. So do you see on the toe right there how it's a little darker? I created another color by adding in a little bit more brown and a little bit more pink. And this was starting to feel a little more accurate to my skin tone. I grabbed two nude heels that I have. One is kind of a pinky nude, which I really like, and the other is more of a tan nude. I sort of decided to mix the two as my inspiration and mix another set, custom color set. So I added a little bit more again of the pink and of the brown, and then this is where I was at. The shoe on the right, I just painted, perfect. This really feels like the right nude, so obviously I'm gonna make the other one match and paint both of them. And you can see the difference. It's subtle, but it's really about matching your own nude. Now, this is an important step. This is called Raleigh Restoration's Scratch, scratch Resistant Sealer. And it's really important if you're gonna do something like this so that you can actually wear them and nothing's gonna chip, nothing's gonna scuff, and it'll last forever. Now, my original plan was to actually add this trim directly to the shoe, like right onto that belt. But then I realized, what if I made it detachable? Then I could add it onto a bunch of different shoes, and that seemed like a smarter way to go. The particular trim that I had had nowhere that I could add rings or hooks. So I thought a good hack for it would actually be using some of this. This is like a clear elastic. And I thought that's perfect because you won't see it because it's clear and it will allow me to create little loops where I can hook it on. So it kind of, it gives me a base to work with. You can use regular elastic, just make sure it's small enough that you're not seeing it through. 
You're gonna wanna cut a piece that's about two inches longer on either side, so about four inches longer in total, so that you have tails to work with, and you'll see why in just a moment. Add some E6000 glue, lay it down, use your fingers to smush it in, and give it a good amount of time to dry. Now, it's time to create the loops for our hooks. I'm using a lobster clasp like this, and you wanna make sure that it has a large opening on the bottom, not a tiny one like for jewelry, a bigger one like this, so the elastic can go through that loop. Now, you pull the elastic back, pull it nice and tight so that it looks like the lobster clasp is just coming right out of the crystal, and you'll secure it down. This will allow you to have a piece that can be attached and detached, all sort of being secured to this elastic. Now, after having done it, this was sort of like I was figuring it out as I was going. If I could start all over again, I would definitely make the entire elastic piece first. I would have taken my elastic piece, added my lobster clasp, and sewn it down. Sewn it so it's in place. On the other side, you're gonna create a little loop. I would have sewn that into place. Once I had my two pieces with the lobster clasp and loops attached, then I would have attached my crystal on. Because once it's this way, I can't sew it. I really need to glue it, and I think it would be much stronger and much better if the actual hooks and loops were sewn and then the trim was just kind of glued onto that. But this worked and it was totally fine. I just would make it, I think it'd be more secure. And now you can see it can just get attached to any boot, hooked on to any boot, totally swappable. And again, like you saw, even as a necklace, which you'll see at the end too. All right, so for the next one, I thought I would use all of these really beautiful trims and create like a layered look, like maybe add two or three multiple layers, which I think will be really pretty. For this version, I am gonna use jump rings and hooks because this particular trim actually has like openings where I can feed a jump ring through, whereas the other trim had nothing like that. So you're gonna wanna get strong jump rings. Really strong ones are super important. I actually think I'm gonna swap these out for stronger ones, or I could double them up if I want. So I'm gonna take my larger jump ring and I'm gonna loop both of my trims onto it. I end up adding a third, but for right now I've just got the two and they are both attached. Now I grab my lobster clasp and I loop that onto the jump ring as well. Again, two trims and a lobster clasp are all attached to the one jump ring, which is why the strength of it is gonna be super important. Now, I draped it around my boot, the boot that I thought I'd most likely wanna wear it with, and I'm just deciding on length. If you wanna create the layered effect, it's super important that you figure out which piece is shorter, which piece is longer. Once I knew the length, I cut the trim to length and then added another jump ring to the end. Once you have one done, you know your length. So now just lay it flat and use that as a guide. You're gonna wanna take the trim, count your crystals, count, you know, lay, line it up, however you wanna measure it, and just make a second pair that's exactly the same. Now you can see here, I added that skinnier trim across the top. I'm making this the shortest so that this is gonna go kind of around the ankle and the rest will hang down on the heel. Now, the way I did it is I looped it into the prongs. Not the strongest, so if you are gonna do something like that, make sure you push the prongs down and maybe add like a little dot of E6000 glue so that it stays nice and secure. Once you're done, you wanna put it on your shoe so you can look at it. It's funny because when you lay it flat, you think you lined it up right, and then you put it on the shoe and you realize things are like upside down. You need to actually layer them in the correct order. So I just took both of them, put them on a boot, did them in the right order so that they would drape and hang, and then this guy was done. Now, I'm a crazy person, uh, I know this, and I decided I wanted my zipper to be black. The burgundy zipper really bothered me, so I just took a paint pen and literally painted the zipper tape in between each of the teeth, all along the tape, until the entire zipper appeared to be black. I did two simple passes on it, and it worked beautifully. It totally looks like a black zipper. Made sure to do any touch-ups with the beige paint if I needed, and that was it. Okay, you guys, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Um, I've got another really fantastic DIY coming up next week. I'm doing so many fun, like, Y2K trends, like yin yangs and peace signs and smiley faces and floral patches on jeans. It is such a fun, happy, celebratory video, and I hope you will join me for that next week. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Comment them down below. You know I'm all up in those comments. All right, you guys, love you. Thanks for being here. Have a beautiful week.